Hey, what's up? Operation iDroid here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you a free, no jailbreak, permanent solution to getting your favorite third party applications and emulators on your iOS device. However, there is one requirement to do this, and it is that you need a Mac computer. If you do not have one, ask to borrow one or whatever you can, because without it, you cannot do this, and I'm sorry. However, check the description to see a playlist of currently working emulators that do not require a jailbreak or a computer. With all that being said, a Macintosh computer is all you need to follow this tutorial and get playing emulators like Providence without the agony of it getting revoked. If you're excited to learn how to do this, please hit that like button and without any further ado, let's head into the tutorial. All right, so let's begin. Make sure to follow everything I do as I do it to make sure that you do not make any mistakes. With that being said, first thing we're gonna do is open our app store and search for Xcode because we need Xcode 7 to use Xcode 7. So go ahead and search Xcode, hit get and install. Then it'll prompt you to put in your Apple ID, put your password, sign in and then the app will begin to download. Xcode 7 is actually a pretty big application so make sure you have enough space on your computer as well as get ready to wait a while because it is going to take some time and when it's done come back to this video when xcode is done go ahead and open it and once xcode opens we are going to go into the preferences but first we got to agree to the terms and conditions so hit agree and then sign in to your computer's password and hit OK and it'll begin to install the components which may take a couple of minutes so be patient and when it's done you'll have a screen like this. From here we're going to click on Xcode at the top left hand corner, go to preferences and click on accounts. Here we're going to add our Apple ID. I'm sure if you have an Apple device you have an Apple ID and you can't get Xcode without an Apple ID. So. Put in your Apple ID here that does not have a developer's program attached to it because of course this is completely free, you don't need a developer's program to do this as it has been updated in Xcode 7. Once you plug in your Apple ID then it'll be done, it'll show you all your information right here and you can exit Xcode. Now we're going to get the actual application that we want to use on Xcode. In this case I'm going to be showing you guys with Providence so I'm going to paste the URL to Providence GitHub in the description below so you can use it as well and once you find an open sourced application that you want you're going to copy the URL and clone it in terminal to do this you're going to go into terminal which is an application you can search for it and you're going to put JIT clone and paste what you just copied and then it'll begin to clone the github page into your terminal now some open source applications have specific instructions for you to actually clone it onto your computer because it may need other things from gem tools. So make sure you read the GitHub page if it has any certain prerequisites that you need to do to actually run the application on Xcode. I've had some trouble with GBA for iOS, I actually could not get it to work so if there's any Xcode experts watching this video, maybe you can help me out in the description below as well as Nitrogen has not been updated to work on iOS 9 yet so if you have an iOS 8 device you can use this method to get Nitrogen but if you're on iOS 9 it will not work. With that being said, once terminal is done, go ahead and open Xcode, click on file, open and then go to your home. Your home has the little house and is the name of your computer. Then click on the Providence folder that will now be there and open the Providence workspace file that is there. Once you open that, go ahead and click on Providence and plug in the iOS device that you would like to put the Providence or GitHub application that you have. Once you do that, you want to change the bundle identifier to com. Whatever you put in the middle does not matter. I put mine because it's mine. But make sure you do this step and then change the team to your Apple ID and hit fix issues. Once you do this, you should not have any issues installing the application onto your iOS device and what's left to do is just wait for the indexing to finish and make sure right here next to Providence your device is selected and then once all that's done 
you can go ahead and hit the play button and it'll say build successful after a while because it does take some time to do that and if it says could not launch providence or whatever application you have that does not matter and you can see here on my ios device i now have providence but of course if you're on ios 9 it will say that it's by an untrusted developer so make sure you go to your settings general profiles and trust that of course this does have some sensitive information so i'm going to go ahead and blur that out but remember that these applications you install from github will only last three months and then be revoked so you will need to repeat this process every three months to make sure that the application keeps working on your ios device forever without any problems with all that being said, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, then please leave a like as it's greatly appreciated, as well as subscribe if you're new because I make awesome tutorials like this one every week, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and welcome to the operation.